Today we'll talk about how to train your downline for network marketing success, and I'll share with you what helped me create the number one producing team in that company. First, I'm gonna share a very common source of sabotage around your work ethic and how you can fix that. Next, I'll share why training in this profession, in network marketing, is just so different from every other career. And lastly, I'll share what you really need to teach your team for maximum duplication. Now, when it comes to this topic, I want you to be very careful that you don't overtrain your team. This is very important for a few reasons. One, when you overtrain your team, you get out of personal production. And two, they think they have to be a trainer to be in your position. And most people don't want to be trainers. Maybe you love training. Some people do. A lot of people don't like training. But if they think at your level they have to be a trainer, it'll actually create sabotage, which leads me into the two different work ethics. So first work ethic, your personal work ethic. Now, I've heard people say, well, I don't want to reach out to too many people because you know that's not duplicatable. If I reach out to 50 people, most people aren't going to do that. That's not duplicatable. That work ethic shouldn't fall under that scrutiny because people understand that people can do, not do different levels of personal effort. So I would not throttle yourself and your efforts because you're worried someone's not going to duplicate how much you're doing. Now, what you should be doing, like what you're doing, they need to be able to do. So whatever it is that you're using for videos or systems, et cetera, they need to be able to do that. Your quantity of that work should not be under scrutiny for your personal production. The work ethic that you need to be very aware of is your team work ethic. Whatever you do for your team, they think they have to do. So if you're answering calls every night at midnight, if you're checking on everyone's order, if you're you know, showing up and spending two hours on Zoom with every person you ever recruit, well, I can tell you, and I know this may sting, you're creating sabotage because they don't wanna do those things. They don't wanna be the mother hen. They don't wanna be the, the person that has to do everything for their team. And I know sometimes this can be like a guilty response, like, oh, they're in my team, I gotta help them, I gotta do whatever it takes. Understand that you creating that makes them not want to be you. In fact, you may do things in a way where they actually thank you, but it actually sabotages them. Let me give you an example. So before I understood this, I if, if, if a team member had a question, I'm like, yeah, call me, man. And so we get on the phone and, you know, I remember, I'll give you a specific instance, but a guy calls me and he says, you know, hey man, I used to be in construction. You know, how should I go back to those people I used to work with and, and pitch them the business? And I said, oh yeah, man, I can help you, you know, no problem. And so the next 45 minutes, I'm on a phone call with him that's not being recorded, that he's certainly not gonna be able to repeat, that's not uploaded into the cloud for other people to hear. It's completely non-duplicatable. And so I have this conversation. He's, oh man, thank you, dude. Oh my goodness, that was so good. And, and so a week later, he's like, hey man, I got another question. I'm like, sure, call me. And he calls me and he says, hey man, I'm thinking about going after some of my wife's friends because they're really good networkers. And you know, like, how would I approach them? And I said, well, how'd it go with the construction workers? And he said, ah, you know, I, I, just, I just don't think they'd be interested in it. All that time I spent with him, was for absolutely nothing, first of all, okay? Now, what would have been better? In that same situation, if someone says, how do I reach out to people I used to work with? If I point them to a, a video and then I teach them, hey, oh, that's a good question. We got a video that teaches you how to do that. And the cool thing is, if anyone ever asks you that, you can point them to that same video. That's called teach to teach. The less you're spending your personal time per rep is actually gonna increase their confidence that they can do the business like you do it. The more time you spend on your team work ethic, the more things you do for your team, they're gonna think, that's what I have to do? I don't know if I can do that. And so you gotta be aware of the two different work ethics. Okay, so why is training in network marketing so different from other careers? Well, it's, it's real simple, actually. The realtor isn't showing houses in the hopes that the person they're showing houses to also becomes a realtor. The chiropractor isn't, you know, 
cracking your back, hoping that you too will become a chiropractor. They're typically not selling chiropractic certification services, but the network marketer is the one that's doing things in a way that they hope someone wants to also do. Your job is to do the things that you do in a manner that other people believe they can do them. And that's very different. And so some of the problems that come into the training space of network marketing is you'll see an influencer say, you know, here's what I do. And they're doing things as an influencer that work for them because they're an influencer. But if that same information, if you apply it to a non-influencer and it doesn't work, then that's not the kind of training you need in network marketing. You need, and this is so well said in the book by Michael Gerber called The E-Myth. In The E-Myth, he breaks down franchises and he talks about why McDonald's works so well. Very rare does a McDonald's go out of business. And they say that their system was designed to be ran by the person with the lowest level of skill. Don't take offense to that if you work at McDonald's, but it's designed to be ran by the person with the lowest level of skill. Not usually an MIT graduate is the manager right? Usually 19 year old, 20 year old. That's what makes it successful that you don't have to have such amazing skills to to run that franchise. Well, network marketing should be the same. It should be very, very simple to run. It should be very simple to execute inside uh, the network marketing space. If it's difficult or if it requires special, you know, skills or certifications or influence or backgrounds or whatever, then it's not really reaching the masses like it's designed to be. Just understand that you may see someone teach, you know, realtors amazing marketing strategies that really work for real estate, but may not be the best approach inside of network marketing because of the duplication factor. Before I get into my last point, I would love, love, love if you would like this video. Very easy for you to do, but it means so much to us. We really appreciate it. It helps us get in front of more people trying to improve their lives, trying to improve their career in network marketing. And if you're a network marketer, clearly subscribe to this channel. Uh, we put out a lot of training for free to help you grow as a network marketer. So here are the steps that you really need to cover if you want more duplication. You need to tell them what to do, right? You need to tell them how do they get the opportunity in front of people? How do they bring up the product or service to people that they know, people that they don't know? What you don't have to do, especially in the beginning, is you do not have to teach them every single thing they need to know. Here's the mistake that I see with most leaders. I'm gonna give you the two most common mistakes I see. Number one, someone joins the company, they're sent an email with 52 different attachments. And I'm here to let you know, some personality types, I'm one of them. If I see 52 attachments, I'm not reading one attachment. I'm, I'm literally just throwing that in the garbage. I'm not, I'm not even opening it. So I'm not gonna open any of those attachments. I will have no idea what you're suggesting for me to say. It needs to be simple. What are the most boiled down basic steps that you can tell them as a new person? You do not have to tell them every single thing that you know or that you've learned over the years. It needs to be very simple. The second mistake I've seen make is that people use too much jargon. There, and, and I have, as a trainer and a coach, I have audited more team Facebook groups than probably anyone else out there. At least I don't know anyone that's audited even close to what I, I've done. But I'll audit a team group and really help them with their language, with their culture, with their fast start, with their welcome process. A lot of times they'll use jargon that people on the inside of the company know, but a new person wouldn't know. So I've, I've seen fast starts that said, okay, make sure you go to your customer pod and then update it and use, uh, use your favorite JLD. Uh, what, right? What, what are you saying? What do you, what do you mean? Now people on the inside may know that, but people that are new, it makes them feel stupid. And in some personality types, they'll see that and they'll just be like, well, I don't understand, forget it. You'll actually have people quit because you have either too much in your startup process or it's just too cryptic, they don't understand it. You'll never create a problem by speaking more plainly. And so make sure 
you're keeping it simple, as concise as possibly can be, and that you're speaking plainly. So anyone of any background, education level, they can actually follow it. Now, if you need help as a leader, we have an amazing coaching program that helps you, and these, this is not just an accountability program, but really helps you understand how to market on social media, how to brand yourself, how to work with your team, and so much more. If you'd like to learn more about that, these are coaches that I've personally trained. You can learn more at higdengrouptraining.com. We also have that link in the very top of the description. You can just click it if you would like. Nothing to buy over there, actually. All it does is just ask you a few simple questions and our team will contact you, see how we can help you, at least give you some guidance. But if you're trying to be a better leader in network marketing, this program will really help.